Wow. Okay. Hmm. How wonderful. Oh, good. We have enough for a minion. <laughs> the Jewish tradition that is, and 10 men can be gathered together. And when you have the presence of 10, you have the presence you're able to access. Thank you all for being here. You're all going to get old if you're lucky. You're all going to die, and it has nothing to do with luck. That's going to happen. So for who we have left of our future, I thought what would be remarkable is to have a group of people together that go through the process in a way where they're a choice as opposed to the default that is usually given by our cultural world. And we did this retreat, which I think is remarkable. And people were transformed. They actually went into this new space of being an elder. And it was far beyond what I ever thought would be possible. And they wanted to sustain that. And so this, these calls, these Sangha calls are a product of that. And we welcome you to this community. We welcome the conversation. We have a kind of agenda that we do that we think is helpful to get the space of this Sangha. That is, we have a meditative practice that we begin with and we end with a benediction because we think they're all appropriate. And then there'll be, I want to uh, let you know that there'll be breakout rooms tonight of which you will be participating and engaged in the question. And then there'll be a leader from each group that comes back and reports. And that will be somewhat of what we see. <clears throat> we'll learn something. We'll get something we never had before. And that would be the purpose of the Sangha. It's to grow all together. That's basically it. And who's going to give us our instructions is uh, my, one of my bestest ever employees that I can't even imagine. And so, uh, Melissa, so it's over to you. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, so tonight, after Judy does uh, all of her magic, um, Mark will pose a question for you guys to take to your breakout rooms. And I will break you up in rooms of roughly four each. Um, and you guys will take it away for about 20 minutes. I'll give you some pings um, while you're in the rooms, which will remind you that you have 10 minutes left. Um, and then you'll get a 60 second countdown as the room closes and you'll automatically be brought back um, here. So the only thing you'll have to do is when we launch the breakout rooms, you might get a pop up on your screen that says join, agree to join room and just hit yes. Um, after that, if you guys can all assign amongst yourselves someone to come back and kind of report back from your room, um, that would be great. And then we'll just go around and do, do the sharing. If you have any questions, type it in the chat and uh, I'll be keeping an eye on Very clear directions. That's exactly what I need in my life. It's perfect. <laughs> Hi, right, Judith. So who Judy is for me before we begin is an angel. So she brings something that's really special for me in terms of who I am after my interaction with her. It's, it's remarkable. Thank you, Mark. And uh, Mark Heidemann would join Land, of course. So Judith is going to do a meditation and then uh, 
we're going to ask a couple questions. It's over to you. Okay. So welcome everybody. This is this is wonderful. Um, so we we begin each call with a meditation, and the reason is twofold. Um, the first is a meditation which brings us all into a similar state by breathing together and listening together. We leave behind our day-to-day -day concerns and we come into a kind of harmony that then allows for an opening that when we're speaking to each other, we listen with a different, a different set of ears, basically. And then the meditation is also used to help us focus on what the topic of the conversation for this call will be. So as you're meditating, you will be thinking through what the call is all about. Okay, so let's begin. Um, take a good seat, sit up tall in whatever seat you're in. If you're in a comfy couch, just snuggle yourself toward the edge. Get your feet solidly on the floor and feel them purposely present on the floor. Lift up your toes and place them back down. Bring your awareness from your feet up the length of your shins to your knees and place your hands on your knees. Then rub your hands along your thighs, pressing your thighs into your seat so you're feeling the solidity of the seat below your body. Place your hands in your hip creases and while pressing down onto your hip sockets, lean forward so that your pelvis is touching your hands. Breathe here and feel the solidity of your pelvis into the seat below you. And now rock the pelvis back slightly and come to balance on your two sits bones. Rock a little from side to side and find your center point. Place your hands now on your low belly and feel the breath here, breathing in, the hands expand, the belly expands, exhaling, the hands return to neutral with the belly, breathing in, expanding, exhaling and releasing, breathing in, expanding, exhaling and releasing. With your eyes closed now, place your hands in your lap. From the anchor of your pelvis, feel the length of your low back. Lengthen the back body, gently lifting the low back. On your next breath, feel your middle back lift ever so slightly. And on your next breath, lift the back of your neck and notice how your head is delicately balanced over the bowl of your pelvis. Breathe here softly, breathing in and breathing out. Bring attention to the crown of your head and relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes in their sockets. Soften the eyes and let them nestle. Relax your ears and the muscles of your face, the muscles around your mouth. Soften your tongue, relax your throat mm. and your chest and your low belly. Place your hands in your lap and rest them. Take a deep breath in and sigh out. Deep breath in, sigh out. One last time, breathing in and sighing. Now bring your attention to your visual field behind your closed eyes. 
and bring into that visual field a recollection of a landscape that is awe-inspiring, something magnificent, something grand, something you have experienced. Bring forward to your full attention this awe-inspiring landscape. Visualize the vista clearly. Notice the sky. Are there clouds? What kind are they? Notice the season of the year. Notice the time of day. Notice the temperature. Is it warm? Is it cool? Is it cold? Is there a breeze or is the air still? Notice the colors. Are they bright or muted? Are there sounds? Are there aromas? Are you alone? Or are you among others? Feel and sense as precisely as you can. Breathe here into the enormity of this vista. Can you feel the awe in this landscape? Can you feel this awe in your body? Where do you feel it? In your chest? In your limbs? In your head? Take this moment and breathe, feeling the power of this awe. Imagine throwing your arms wide open to receive this power. How does that feel? How does your heart feel? Are you expansive? Are you connected in some new way to nature, to this landscape? What does this grandeur do to your awareness? Just notice, just notice how you are being in the present of this experience in this moment. Are you being present to a connection to something larger than yourself? And where is your self in this moment? Are you being your best self in the midst of this recollection are you being your best self in the presence of this grandeur of nature? Breathe now into this awareness. Just notice how you are able to change your state of being with this recollection, with this memory. Notice your body and your breath. Relax into this state of being. Lengthen your very next inhale. And lengthen your next exhale. Slowly return your awareness to the breath in your body. Slowly return to a softness in your visual field. Feel the breath in your low belly and place your hands on your belly once more. Softly breathing in, softly exhaling. In this moment, acknowledge your capacity to invoke a sense of awe at will. Acknowledge your ability to be aware 
of this awareness. Acknowledge your ability to be a witness to these thoughts of yours, to your memories, to your imaginations, and to your stories about mm. them all. Rub your hands together to create some warmth and place them over your softly closed eyes. Breathe here for a moment. I have a favorite quote from Michael Cunningham. It says, we become the stories we tell ourselves. So be mindful of the stories you tell yourself because your state of being will be altered by them. Slowly draw your hands away from your face and I welcome you back to the Sangha and I thank you for practicing with me. Would you read the quote again, please? Yes. It's from Michael Cunningham. And he says, um, we become the stories we tell ourselves. So be mindful of the stories you tell yourself. Your state of being will be altered by those stories. Would you say one more time for me, please? Yes. Yes. We become the stories we tell ourselves. So be mindful of the stories you tell yourself. Your state of being will be altered by those stories. Okay. So <clears throat> where's Daryl? Oh, there you are. So when, uh, <clears throat> if you're the author of the story, why do you write the protagonist the way you do? Say that again, Mark. I was trying to get unmuted. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah. My, my wife, wish she had that button, that'd be perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, the question is, if you're the author of your story and you have a protagonist of the story, why are you writing him, that character, that way? Okay. So, as the author of my story, um, I found out pretty early in life and throughout most of my life that there were certain things that got me uh, favor and uh, praise and <clears throat> attention. There were other things that um, got me, uh, you know, like scorn and punishment, things like that. Um, and so I started writing my story to kind of maximize the good stuff and uh, minimize, you know, the punishing part of life. Um, I think that uh, along with that, um, along the way, uh, different people at different times uh, told me, this is who you are. You know, you are this, you are that. And, and some of those things I believed, some of those things I didn't believe and I rebelled against, um, those, uh, you know, those um, became my story also. Um, and I would say that uh, working around, you know, th those issues, you know, what makes people like me, what make what makes people not like me, um, um, I, I think I, uh, you know, I got kind of far down the road and and began, you know, asking myself, is this really who I am? you know, this story, so to speak, that I've written for myself. And I felt that, um, you know, I, I really felt that it wasn't, that that I, I was more than that. 
and that who I am was something different. And, um, and you know, that had me start to turn uh, to really wanting in the last third of my life to, you know, write a different story, the one that I felt like was my own story, not, not my story in reaction to, you know, all the other stuff in the world. Uh, the, I, the poet calls it the blank page. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, man, now what? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get it. Very good. So we're going to go into our, this is the question you're going to take in. Is, you know, you're the author of the story. Two ways to look at this question. Why do you want to write it this way? Who's the author of the story? And another side of it would be, well, what kind of future do you want to write? So in your groups, have that, that question as your topics. All right, Mel, would you do instructions one more time? And here we go. Okay, in just a sec, you're gonna have something pop up on your screen asking if you wanna join the room that you've been assigned. Just hit yes. This is random. So you guys are gonna be uh, with whoever you get to be with and exactly. it's gonna be fun. So um, I will pop the question that Mark just um, said in the chat in just a few minutes, just as a reminder. And then you'll get a couple of other reminders about time and then we'll be back here in 20 minutes. Appreciative. All right, what we're going to do is that each group is going to have a speaker. You're going to tell which one was nominated from group one through five. And we'll write that down and then we'll listen to what you saw and what each of the people saw in your room. Um, and I'd like to hear. All right, room one, is that how we do this? No. Yeah, so room one was the room that had Mark Silberg in it. So whoever was the speaker for that room, if you can unmute. That's me. So I am unmuted. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, in terms of the story that we've written and, and why, um, it, it has they're so grounded in the the complementarity between the limiting beliefs that we've developed along with our positive um, positive self perceptions and thoughts and the notion that those were developed part based on context experiences and dna um and this this sort of segues into going forward but to really live in a state of gratitude and for the plentifulness with which we actually do live and spend time in places and with people that we love to live in a state of loving kindness with ourselves as well as with others and to be aware of our stories and make really conscious choices about the stories that we tell ourselves and <clears throat> and just notice the degree to which we get pulled back that it's so human and natural to revert back to the limiting beliefs or the stories that are uh, grounded in the limiting beliefs and that we do have choice around that and to be self-responsible about what we focus on and so we did talk some about um, how that can manifest or be um, be evidenced in how we react or behave with others, but also how we can either be kind or be really hard on ourselves. <clears throat> Again, just to sum it all up, to be aware, to be conscious, and to make uh, well-informed choices. Damn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, I want to be in that group. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good group. Wow. Oh, that I have to add one more thing because I am stealing this. It was Kim that said this. So Kim, I'm outing you. I hope that's okay. But I love the phrase from goddess to garbage, living from goddess to garbage and the polarities and the ping pong effect and, and or it could be God to garbage. And so um, I just love that as, as a really succinct way to talk about that duality that many of us, if not all of us, have lived with. That was just group one. 
fabulous. Wow. Okay. All right, room that, two. That'll be a tough one. The to top. <laughs> room two was um, the room with Ed. So whoever was the speaker for that room, if you can unmute. I don't see a, Ed. What, oh, there. I, I'll I'll unmute. We um we kind of never did that part of the democratic democratic process to nominate oh. somebody. Yeah. Um, but it was um it was Mark, Pam, and Howard was there. Um, he was in his car, and uh, he's not. He didn't show back up with this one. But um, anyway, uh, we had we had a whole host of different things that we went through, um, and several of the same things that we heard from the first group. Um, since it's not a competition, um, obviously. Um, gratitude um, to be grateful that we are at this point in our lives where we have um, awareness of the stories that we're in and awareness that um, life has attached to its stories and um, the, the the question the objective is how do we live uh, with those stories and through those stories and not make any mistakes about identifying self-identifying with a story because there are going to be negative and positive things sake of identifying you yourself your essence as the story um it just makes things very very hard and um that we've been able to to learn over time and um uh, again have gratitude and appreciation for the fact that um if we're writing our story and looking at ourselves we're going to be looking at ourselves as protagonists and be able to um, make those adjustments throughout life and um, be of value to ourselves as well as others. And um, in terms of if there's preferences, um, obviously the preferences to move towards things that are um, more of a, a positive nature, um, but also realizing that um, Nobody did promise us a rose garden, and we do need to be able to know how to work through and live through all of the various things that will come to us and take advantage of everything that happens throughout our lifetime and to be in a constant mode of, of learning and growing. Um, did I miss anything, guys? I think you need to practice what you preach. This you is to perfect. Practice We're all here preach. for that and exactly perfect. what you We're said. We're all here for that and exactly what you said. Okay. Back to mute. Wow. All room right. Three, room three, right? Room three was Daryl's room. So whoever's the speaker for Daryl's room, if you can unmute. Well, I'm the speaker for our room. <laughs> Um, so what we came up with was this, you know, we were the authors of our own story. Um, we write the story with the way we did, we did because it allowed us to survive, you know, to survive and grow up and, and I guess feel the gratitude for where we are now at the same time, um, you know, many of us reach a point in life where it starts to seem like that story doesn't fit me anymore. Um, and for some of us, that's where we are now. And that then we have the chance to write a new story. Um, it's, um, it takes a lot of courage to do that. And we also looked at the ideas of who is going to be drawn to us in our new story and who will we serve in our new story. That's what we got. Wow. <laughs> Next room. Room four was uh, Judy. Who, who in your room is the um, speaker? 
um, that would be me, the newbie oh. to this group. Um, oh, so yeah. um, part of our conversation was just talking about the transformation of your retreat. And I'm not sure if I, you know, um, that was worth hearing, of course, um, but I kind of knew that from my conversations with Mark Silver. But nonetheless, it was beautiful to hear David relate that transformational experience. And I was stunned to hear that Judith was a former dentist because I would have never guessed that. <laughs> And so, um, you know, I know that the question on the table was, you know, uh, we become the stories that we tell ourselves. But what I really heard was, um, as you enter this phase of becoming an elder, it brings so much possibility to um, just think about the difference you want to make uh, in the world and those around you and um, how you want that story to be told, um, you know, about your life and how you did um, do your part in the world for, for good. And um, so I look at this group as giving, um, uh, just permission to be um, the person that you become as a result of your life circumstances, you know, and as I'm, you know, poised to enter this next phase of life, um, it's really a breath of fresh air to have that opportunity. Yes. <laughs> well said. Exactly. All right. Room yeah. five, our last room was uh, Fred's room. So the speaker for that room can unmute, please. Um, that would be me. I was volunteered for this. And you guys know how much I love to do public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> but I had Fred, uh, Denise, and Jean in our group and we each uh, shared our, our life story. And one of the things that we kind of noticed was that as well as we planned our stories um, or our careers, what have you, everything did not go as planned. Uh, everything that we had our, as far as expectations, um, there was always U-turns or things that happened. Um, and I love what uh, Jean said about it. It's a, uh, she said that you know, life is like a series of edits. They start out pretty shitty and then they get better as, as time goes on. But, um, you know, there are a lot of doors that open, a lot of doors that get closed. Um, what we loved about our lives was that, uh, you know, we met people that uh, affected us in some, some way. Uh, and some some deeper than others, uh, but uh, but it caused us to make decisions in our lives that um, made us change. And uh, so our stories all had uh, we thought it might be more chance, but you know Fred said you know everything that happens happens for a reason, and. The fact that the four of us were brought together in that room just expanded our horizons and our uh, connections with each other. It brought us back to being present and in the moment. And uh, I think that that, that was, a, there's other things that we, we shared too, was that since nothing happens by chance, there's always a, a higher or more divine power that's acting upon our lives. And uh, I think that was an important part too. So that was our story. I, I don't know where I would rather be than in that story that you are now telling us, uh, Sangha. 
All right, I always go to Dr. Penske as we aim for close here. So what have you seen? What would be your, what will you tell Robin tonight? Uh, uh, well, so, you know, what I've seen is um, just the power of, uh, of the Sangha, the, the power of a group of people who are seeking and yearning to know something deeper is, is always inspirational. It's always something that brings me out of my small, small S self and brings me into connection with my large S self, who I want to be. And that's what I love about these conversations and what I love about the possibility that lives in the Sangha. The uh, next call is May 24th. You'll be notified of it. You can register if you want. The <clears throat> retreat is on hold because we don't have enough people to qualify ourselves to do it. If you're going to do it either as a re review or new, please let me know ASAP. Um, let's see, what else is there anything? Um, you can always call me if you have anything that you want to talk about, about aging. Um, I'm open for conversation. Okay. We end with a benediction because we think we it's a good channel to <clears throat> leave on. We usually close it off ourselves. So, Daryl? Okay. Um, this is a passage from the Buddhist tradition. It's twin verses by the Buddha. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. We are formed and molded by our thoughts. Those whose minds are shaped by selfish thoughts cause misery whenever they speak or act. Sorrows roll over them like the wheels of a cart roll over the tracks of the bullock that draws it. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. We are formed and molded by our thoughts. Those whose minds are shaped by selfless thoughts give joy whenever they speak or act. Joy follows them like a shadow that never leaves them. He insulted me, he struck me, he cheated me, he robbed me. Those caught in resentful thoughts never find peace. He insulted me, he struck me, he cheated me, he robbed me. Those who give up resentful thoughts surely find peace. For hatred does not cease by hatred at any time. Hatred ceases by love. This is an unalterable law. There are those who forget that death comes to all. For those who remember, quarrels come to an end. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. We grow by you being here. We see our own eyes with you being here. The next call is on May 24th. Please join us. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Namaste. Namaste.